on behalf of uh, the nearly 28,000 men and women of U.S. Steel, thank you for convening today's hearing. Your bipartisan leadership has proven critical to confronting the threats posed to the U.S. industry's long-term capacity to provide a strong foundation for our nation's economy, security, infrastructure, environment, energy independence, and manufacturing industry. Since the President signed the Section 232 National Security Action on Steel Imports, positive impacts occurred swiftly and continue today. Jobs are returning. Steel making capacity is reviving. The U.S. steel industry is able to innovate and invest, modernize our operations, and strengthen our ability to supply America's demand for steel. The Section 232 is a success and must be kept strong. U.S. Steel is at the forefront of this renaissance in Granite City, Illinois. Two blast furnaces restarted in 800 jobs to return. In Gary, Indiana, we'll invest at least $750 million from a $2 billion revitalization of key steel-making assets in the United States. In Texas, a tubular mill we thought was shuttered forever will be back this summer with 140 new workers. In Alabama, construction has resumed on a new electric arc furnace with 600 jobs to build it and 150 new full-time workers to operate it. In Ohio, a $400 million advanced high-strength steel production line will open this summer to supply automakers building more fuel-efficient cars, trucks, and SUVs. At each of our operating locations, we're hiring. At Pittsburgh's Mon Valley Works, for example, in 2018, we hired 400 new workers. A new four-year agreement with 14% wage increases was negotiated with United Steel Workers. Non-represented employees received unprecedented performance awards and an expanded benefits package. Restarts, rehires, and reinvestments in our people and facilities are tremendously positive news, yet view this for what it is, a recovery. For years, deep damage has been inflicted by floods of foreign steel into our open market. Don't forget, it was just 2015 and 2016 when thousands of steel workers were being laid off and American mills were being idled and even demolished. The U.S. steel industry is still vulnerable. Now is not the time to blink. The Section 232 must continue to be applied to all countries, especially the largest import sources, whether that's a tariff or a hard quota. Even our best allies can be conduits for foreign steel from China and elsewhere. If Section 232 doesn't apply everywhere, it's nowhere, as border leaks will continue from global excess capacity. No one should be lulled into thinking Section 232's job is done because the U.S. industry has touched 80% capacity utilization. This is not a temporary peak to be climbed, celebrated, and abandoned. The plateau to be sustained as the bare minimum necessary for the industry to survive and supply our country over the long term. As U.S. steelmaking recovers and rebuilds under Section 232, American manufacturing is thriving and the overall economy is growing. GDP grew at over 3% in 2018. The unemployment rate is low. Blue collar jobs in mining, construction, and manufacturing are expanding. The steel Section 232 is allowing the U.S. steel industry to stabilize, invest, innovate, and grow, which makes our country and economy stronger. Please don't blink. Continue to support the steel section 232 and the hardworking Americans mining, melting, and pouring steel in the USA to strengthen our national and economic security. We cannot permit our great nation to become dependent on foreign steel to defend, build, and power our country. We must continue to keep America steel strong.